Hey everyone, this is Split King Gamer. Welcome back to Let's Play uh, Sonic Fighter Zero Gravity. In the last part, um, we found out Eggman was involved in the story mode, but now he's the head of Meteotech, which is also one thing I forgot to mention. The game continues to have this hit where the characters keep saying Meteotech, but some of the stages and some of the ones say Meteotech, so I'm gonna say that mostly of a translating issue. Uh, anyways, we basically had a basically of a time limit race to catch up to Amy, and she says that one of the robots that were chasing her in Storm blew up. <laughs> um, and then we went to the Gigan Rocks to see if one of the stones that we found are going to be similar to what we have. Uh, I'm kind of tired because I had a rough rough day and at this I was so exhausted and let's just say that there was something that happened at work that I felt really guilty about and I'm just part of myself so hopefully basically hopefully finishing off the story mode and jumping into the next story mode will hopefully alleviate some of that stress when Knuckles had some intelligence and wasn't labeled as an idiot. The divine wings, straggler of stars, lose their plumes to the dark and fall to the ground. The plumes become as stars returning to this land. We, the children of Babylon... Babylon? What connection do they have with these stones? We still don't know them. But could the stones those robots are after be the plumes written about here? The divine wings, traveler of stars, could they be power units used to operate some starship? So this divine wings thing is... Right. Babylon Garden. I had a feeling that we could have crawled its way back knowing that the Babylon rogues are involved in this. Because of course there is. Star, lying in the east among earth stained red by the dawn's light. Eggman and Jet were headed east. The great scar must be the crater formed when the meteorite struck ground. That must be where Eggman found the plume. Which means the mother computer is probably waiting there too. Alright, time to go catch up. Yeah, because here's a break from all the exposition. Because like I said at the start of this Let's Play, the story mode is a lot more exposition heavy. Huh? And look who's here. Where's Eggman? across the world to control the robots. In other 
other words, you're looking at Mediotech's brain. That big eggman, Nappy Arcs of the Cosmos, we got me right in there. What's he after this time? He's probably planning to use the stone's power to issue an order to all the world's robots from this tower. Sooner or later, he was planning to set the robots rampage. That was probably the reason for forming Mediotech in the first place. The eggman land project again, huh? He never gives up, does he? Nope. Eggman had to be involved in this in some form or another. Defeat Jet in the Crimson Tower race, get first place. Yeah, so so unlike the first game where Jet was a, was open to working with Eggman, in this game there is no such thing here. And the course we got is Crimson Crater. Yeah, th that's what I'm talking about. The characters in the it was something that was also brought up in the review, but the characters keep referring to the company as Meteotech, and yet the and yet it seems like almost everything else says Meteotech. Like, again, I think it might be just a translating error, but it's like, make up your mind with what you want to call this place. Okay, so it's a company that... I think after a couple of races and some off screening, I'd be much better. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! God sub boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so like I said, normally every other day is where I would basically get on my elliptical machine and try to work out, but, but I basically wanted to just continue with this let's play just to alleviate some tension and course comes down the freaking luck. Yeah. Yeah, because most of the time, compared to the first game, I think, think the game frequently tries to prompt you more to more of when you perform a jump and stuff like that. Fuck me. Alright, well I got some catching up to do now because... Because again, it seems like that the controls in this game are far more sensitive than the first game. Okay, not the way I wanted to go, but hey, I'm still on the track. Just like that, I'm really right on their ass. up this time. Alright, 
I'm back in. <laughs> Wait, how am I in second all of a sudden? Oh. Oh yeah, because I think Jet was taking the shortcut. Yeah, I'm a little antsy today because of what happened today, okay, essentially. And I'm not gonna get any rings after that. Because I basically do like one upgrade system at a time, basically. So, and because it costs rings, you're, you aren't going to get as much rings as you, as you did in the first game. And we just jump right into the ending cutscene, at least for the hero story. And like I said, because Eggman had to be involved in this somehow. about two more years. You do, you do get it in color. So, it appeared in the first game because of the Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, considering that that was never brought up, ever. And thus, after that, we basically get essentially the main theme of, of the hero story. The song Ungravity by Cashel. And it is a pretty epic opening theme. Well, not opening theme. But if you've seen the very first trailer of Sonic Riders, I immediately like the song. So if you're familiar with the first game, that you know that even though we just played the hero story, we're not fully done with story mode. Because, like I said, if you're familiar with the first game, then you should know that, uh, that after completing the hero story mode, you unlock the Babylon story, and exactly like the first Briar's game, you unlock Cream... Rouge and Shadow in the process, and why did the game just freeze all of a sudden? Uh... Okay, I'm... I'm not liking this. Well, we cleared the hero story mode anyway, so I guess this will have to be an early stop. I just need to confirm something because something happened a long time ago and I'm expecting the worst. Well, I guess I'll see you guys in the next part. Bye.